first, if you just look at what's happening today, the White House announced $50 billion, or I should say tariffs, on $50 billion of Chinese imports. Yesterday, we know that Jay Powell, the Fed chief, declined to comment on what trade policy or a possible trade war would mean for inflation, for markets. Clearly, investors are trying to absorb all of this information, and we see stocks are falling, bonds are rallying. Give us your take. Well, I think a trade war, and to the extent that uh, the Chinese measures uh, re reflect that, um, you know, are, are certainly not good for economic growth and perhaps uh, not good for inflation in terms of slightly higher inflation. So it's hard to know. Um, you know, the bond market uh, may be reacting to the s potentially slower growth, but not the uh, potentially higher inflation. I think basically it's a push, and I, I really don't think the situation today in terms of uh, Chinese trade is the reason behind the markets. What do you think the reason is? Well, I, I think investors heard uh, Chairman Powell yesterday. They um, saw him as pragmatic versus academic, uh, prior Chair uh, Yellen and Chair Bernanke, and um, they heard him say basically that it was a not a day-to-day, -day, but a meeting-to-meeting -meeting type of decision. He said the one important thing uh, that you can glean from today's um, uh, statement is that we raised Fed funds 25 basis points. And, and yes, the you know the the green dots are up around uh, three percent in terms of Fed governors and Fed presidents. But I think the market knows better, and uh, my outlook refers to the possibility and indeed the probability that Fed funds. Uh, have another 25 or 50 basis points to go, and certainly not another three or four or five hikes. Uh, speaking of Jay Powell, your thoughts on his debut, uh, certainly holding the press conference, his first FOMC chair meeting. How would you grade his performance? A, B, C? Well, but, you know, the performance to me is, is not important, but you asked, and so, I, you know, I would say it was very good. Um, you know, he's, uh, like I say, pragmatic and uh, not necessarily pedantic. He doesn't follow models, it appears, as much as uh, Yellen or Bernanke did. And to me, that's very important because, you know, prior models by, uh, you know, the Fed are a 20, 30, and 40-year type of look at uh, an economy that doesn't exist anymore. And to mm. the extent that Powell views that as, uh, you know, the historic as opposed to currently relevant, I think that's, that's all to the good. Bill, flesh out what you were saying there about the apparent exaggeration of what the Fed can achieve here in a 2% inflation world. You're saying, actually, that, that interest rates can't get much above 2% without creating all sorts of problems. Just explain to us what you think the impact would be, whether it's interest rates, whether it's for other central banks or for the U.S. dollar, if indeed they do go above 2%. Well, I think it depends, of course, on other central banks. Uh, China just raised their short-term rate yesterday. But, um, yeah, it, it gets down to a question, in my view, and, and perhaps in uh, Powell's view as well, uh, of what the, the neutral Fed funds rate is. Uh, I think they're trying to find that out. Um, the Fed calls it R star. Um, you know, I would think, and, and we're all just thinking, uh, because the historical evidence uh, would suggest that uh, the, the new uh, neutral uh, real Fed funds rate should go back to 2% as opposed to zero where it is now. But I, I think it's really zero. And so if we have inflation at one and three quarters or 2% going forward, then I think Fed funds should be there too. But it, it's fair to say that uh, some on the Fed think otherwise. Uh, and we're just going to have to see meeting to meeting. But I, I like that from Powell. He's going to look. And if, if uh, unemployment goes lower but doesn't cause a wage increase, then, you know, uh, look for 10-year treasuries around 3% for a long, long time. Mm. But do you agree that actually the Fed can't say anything differently from what they are saying at this point? I mean, even if you're right in what you're saying and actually further out, they actually don't have the kind of scope that they're talking about, they couldn't indicate that to the markets and to investors at this stage, could they? No, I don't think so. And 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 yes, uh, you know, the Fed is always <laughs> observing current circumstances. But uh, you know, even more so now, when when Powell suggests it's almost a meeting to meeting type of decision, and you know, it's based primarily on wage growth as opposed to economic strength. So, you know, investors and and volatility will have to be dependent upon the week to week type of number, I, I suppose. But I think ultimately, if 
Fed funds rest around two or two and a quarter percent, and again, that's not uh, what the Fed is suggesting. But if it stops there, then you know a three percent ten-year Treasury is is okay, and uh, it's probably reflective of what I called a few months ago a hibernating bear market. Mm. Yeah, you, you call that the current beast for the bond market as well. Um, speaking of beasts, that, that's a common word here in your monthly newsletter, your monthly outlook. You've identified leverage as a beast in the current environment that will come later. Leverage on whose part? On the government's part or on government's part, on households' parts, on corporate's part? Can you explain that a little bit more? No, I think a little bit in terms of uh, leverage within the U.S. and, and of course, the the, the real problem, the real beast is in uh, China and elsewhere, but in the U.S., in terms of your specific question, um, you know, there's no problem to my way of thinking with leverage on the government side. They can always print money. They can always raise money. Uh, the, the problem is really not at the moment in terms of household debt, because household debt was reduced significantly since the Great Recession. It's probably in corporations and in zombie corporations that have been kept alive by very low rates, uh, by floating rate notes, et cetera, and that now uh, may have to roll them over in the ensuing months and years. And so uh, we may see some high yield damage if uh, rates continue to go higher because they're the most highly levered. Yeah, and I ask because household debt caused the last recession was a catalyst there. How worried should we be about corporate debt causing the next recession? Oh, um, I don't. I don't think it's going to cause the next recession. I, I think I would add to what I just said, in, in terms of uh, short-term rates, that you know the yield curve is flattening. Uh, you talk about it a lot. Others talk about it a lot. Mainly in terms of the Treasury side, a, a 55 basis point difference between twos and ten-year. I, I would uh, suggest that investors uh, and recessionary uh, lookers. Uh, should should look at the swap curve. That's yeah. a little esoteric, but uh, the swap curve has flattened even more than the Treasury curve, and it's now around 26 basis points, which historically has led to a slowdown, certainly, in the U.S. economy, if not a recession. Slowdown, not recession. Okay. Bill, a lot of this is just a case of whether it's the central bank or for us watching the data and just seeing how the economy plays out. And it's the same thing with where we started as well, talking about the prospects of greater trade tensions going forward. How should investors look at the markets overall today and how should they be positioned? Well, I, I think they should begin to position for slower growth. What are some of those signs? Uh, you know, the Atlanta Fed, which puts out a weekly forecast for uh, first quarter GDP, uh, suggests around 2% as opposed to three to three and a half percent. <laughs> we, have a, we have a savings rate, uh, consumer savings rate of two uh, percent versus a normal six uh, percent. And so there's not much oomph to come from uh, consumers going forward if they don't get wage gains. And, um, you know, we've, we, we've had a central bank raising interest rates now for, you know, some time, perhaps 150 basis points and the curve flattening. And so these are all potential symptoms of not a recession, but certainly slower growth and maybe equities are starting to realize that. 